As a wedding photographer, delivering albums to your couples should be one of the most important things. With every one of my packages, I deliver a beautiful album of all the top photos that my couples want, and it's something that you can easily do as well. So in one of my last videos, which I'll link right up above, I asked you all if you wanted to see more about Smart Albums, which is the quickest and easiest way to build your albums. So let's take a look at that today. So if you're not familiar with Smart Albums, it is a great way to build your albums and you can use any print company that you want to. You're not stuck to one specific print company. Smart Albums is just for designing your actual albums. So here's Smart Albums when you first open it up. And definitely make sure to check out the link in the description to go check them out. Hands down one of the best, best programs you can ever use. And you're about to see why. So I'm going to make a new album. And when I first come to my album, this is where I can choose what print company I want to use. So generally, I use Red Tree albums. And that was all the B-roll of the albums you saw before. I absolutely love their albums. And I've talked about them before as well. I'll have a link in the description about them as well. But their albums are absolutely beautiful. They lay flat. They're very, very high quality. But you can see here, I also have a whole bunch of other companies that I could use if I wanted to. So really, like, you can use just about anything. If you're already using albums, like, you don't have to worry about changing anything. Like, your album company is probably in here. Once you pick a company, it's going to come up with their specific sizes that they offer so that you know that you're already building your album in a way that works for the company that you're gonna use for print. Generally, I like to do a 10 by 10 Red Tree album, but you can see here I have other versions of the albums as well, and I can also change the size. You can also change this stuff later, but you have to make sure it's the same aspect ratio at least. So I'm doing a 10 by 10, it's not too hard to switch to a 12 by 12, but if I was doing something that was more rectangle, that'd be a whole issue. After you choose how you want your album to be, now you can choose all the templates. I usually just use the ones that are built in, but the cool thing is you can actually make your own templates as well. So with the templates, these are gonna be different ways that the photos can show up on a page. And again, you can create your own so you can have a specific look that you like as well. I've always just used what's built into Smart Albums, but you can do something of your own extremely easily. So let's start our album. It's gonna ask me to name it. And I'll just call this test album for now, since I'm doing it for the video. <laughs> so I'm in Smart Albums now, and basically it's broken down into a couple of sections. At the top, that's going to be my spread view. That's going to show me what the actual spread is going to look like. Remember, when you're talking about books, you're not talking about pages, you're talking about spreads. So a single spread is two pages. On the bottom is where all of my photos are going to be, and that's where I would import all my photos to go into the album. So you can see if I click here. Now it's going to ask me where I want to pull my photos from. I go find my photos. So now you can see here right at the bottom, I have all my photos imported that I want to put into this album. Now, there's a couple of ways that I can approach building this album. First, there's the auto build, which is absolutely mind blowing, or I can manually do it myself. So let's first look at the manual way to do it. Generally, what I'll do is I'll select all my photos. And then I bring them up to this gray section here. So that's gonna be all the photos that are gonna be going into my spreads. You can see here I can actually change this if I want to, make the spread view a little bit bigger. And now what makes this so awesome and so quick to use is that all I have to do now is come in between any of these photos and drop a marker, and it's gonna automatically put them on a spread for me. Now, once they're on the spread, I can use up and down on my keyboard to cycle through the different templates. So remember, we were talking about the templates earlier at first. That's what that's for. Smart Albums has a bunch of templates built into it. And all I have to do now is cycle through to get what I want. So if I like this, that's what I can go with. And then I can go on to the next page, section it off. Generally, photos of the same aspect ratio work together well. So I could do these four here like that. We can see his head's cut off here a little bit, but the photo's not like that. 
so I can actually click on it. And then here on the right is where I can make any changes to my photo. So you can see I can just drag that down very quickly and make them fit in, or I could find a different layout that I would rather have. And this is what I love the most about Smart Albums. This is what makes it so quick, is that I can easily just come through, section off my pages, and then change how they're going to look. You can even manually come in as well, and I could change the aspect ratio of this photo if I wanted to. Now, one thing you may have noticed back here, you see this little yellow triangle here? So basically what is happening is it's telling me that the actual resolution of the photo is not large enough. Now I know I exported these specific photos for my blog, so they're probably a little bit smaller. So normally this won't happen, but you wanna make sure you're exporting the full resolution images for your prints. If you're not sure how to do that, definitely check out in the link below, I have a Lightroom course that goes over exporting as well that will help you export for your albums and your prints. So generally this little yellow thing is not gonna be there, but you're seeing it now because the photo's not large enough. And this will happen sometimes too is if you have a single photo on a page and the photo's just not big enough for the way that you're cropping it. And so again, I can quickly come through, drop my page markers, figure out how I want the layout, and before you know it, you have an album in like two seconds. See here, if I want to switch this off, I can do that. Quick and easy. You can also reorder all your spreads here. So if you wanted a different photo before anything, you can just move your spreads to different areas. Extremely quick and easy. I, it's so good. It is so, so good. So now that we looked at how to do it manually, let's talk about how to do it automatically. So you can see I have all my photos selected now and you can see the auto build here on the left. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And now it's asking me how many spreads do I want and how many photos do I want per spread. So let's say I want it, let's say 20 spreads, which is 40 pages. It's saying it's gonna do one to seven pictures per spread. And then I have on smart grouping and everything, template reuse to medium, or you could have it on maximum and it'll just reuse the same type of stuff all the time. Once I have the settings the way that I like them to be, we can auto build. And that was it. Like <laughs> in real time, that took not even a minute. That felt like 30 seconds, if even. And I have a fully built album. Now, generally what I'll do is just kind of thumb through here. Look at that. Look how it grouped the black and whites together. Like this thing knows. You know, and like I was saying, again, I can just drag this down a little bit so his head's not cut off as much. Maybe I want to move a photo, so I can just click and drag this over here. And now they're going to switch places, and I can also drag it down some. Maybe I want that to be the full page spread, and I can fit him in there as well. A little bit of cropping here as well. Look at this. And I did nothing. Nothing at all. Took one minute and then another minute of me coming through and just fixing it up. I'm actually, so I'm gonna move this photo into this spread here. Like, how easy is this, y'all? And that's it. A whole album built in like two minutes. So now that I have everything all finished, it's time to actually export the album. Now there's a couple of different ways you can export. So let's take a look at that real quick. So, 
pretty much what I'm going to do here is go up to File and Export. Now, it's saying upscaled images. Again, my files aren't big enough. Normally, this wouldn't come up at all, so we're just going to ignore that. And what I want to do is export for print. However, keep in mind, you do have options to export for cloud proofing and just export for proofing in general. Now, how I like to do my proofing is I do it through PickTime. When I proof, I export for print, upload those to PickTime for my couples to look at. Once they've taken a look at them and approve them and or give me changes, I make those changes, re-upload it, and then they can approve the album there. If you want to see more about that pick time process, let me know as well. So I'm going to export. This is where I'm going to export it to. Export format. It's going to add a little bit of sharpening, I believe. And everything is good to go. I can change the quality if I want to. But generally, and this is in your preferences, everything is set up just fine. So you don't have to worry about that at all. And then you export. After that, you'll see I have all the spreads here. And this is what I would actually send over to Red Tree Albums for them to print. Really make sure you're doing this for your couples. I cannot tell you how amazing having albums are for your couples. And really, they're going to love every moment of it. Wedding photography is about remembering the day itself. And digital files are cool, but prints are where it's at. I try and print out as many photos as I can. And having actual album books that you can go back and look on your memories are very, very important. So make sure to check that link in the description. Pick up smart albums for yourself and give it a try. Make your albums in literally two to three minutes and get them out to your couples. It'll add value to your weddings. And you can also book for more because you can charge for the album itself as well. If y'all want to learn more about charging for albums and anything else wedding photography, let me know. And also make sure to check out this playlist here, which will give you more information about being an amazing wedding photographer.